Are Sunderland going to run out of steam? In our prediction videos and our championship roundups over here at the OK Football Show, I've had a few things to say about Sunderland. Luck will run out, Sunderland will run out of steam, and Sunderland fans have not been happy with what I've had to say. So I'm here today to give a roundup of Sunderland season so far and have a look at whether Sunderland can last the pace in the championship this season. Right. Itchy nose. Woo. Itchy, itchy, itchy. So at time of recording, Sunderland are second in the table and they've won five games. They've lost once. And yes, Sunderland have been absolutely fantastic. Reggie Labris has been a breath of fresh air considering the times of Alex Neal in League One and Tony Mowbray in the Championship. Sunderland have been going absolute gangbusters this season, playing some brilliant football with a young team. And the reality is, I do think that they will run out of steam. But why do I think that? Is this some prejudice that I hold against Sunderland? No! I genuinely think Sunderland are a fantastic team. They have some outstanding talents. But the reality of the situation for Sunderland is they have outstanding young talents. Romain Mundell and Eliezer Mayenda, they are absolutely brilliant additions into the first team. Amazing academy that Sunderland have, truly remarkable, and they complement the players that Sunderland already had in the team. The likes of Patrick Roberts, Dennis Serkin, Luco Nine, Tri Hume, some amazing, amazing players. And let's not forget Joe Bellingham. He's young, he's 19. He looks like he's on the path to, to be not quite the player that his brother is, but he will be up there as a real, real talent. There have also been some top additions. I think Chris Metham is an absolute beast at this level, like fair play Sunderland for getting him. Alan Brown too. He always impressed me a lot. I'm amazed that he's not even making it into the starting lineup week in, week out. Like he's only started two games at time of recording. And the most recent addition, Aaron Connolly. He's one that I don't understand how his career hasn't really kicked on. I think with the philosophy that Sunderland are playing, the type of football, sweeping, fast, attacking. I think Aaron Connolly is going to be an absolute brilliant addition. And it's crazy that Sunderland got him on a free as well. Top stuff, really top stuff. But now onto the crux of why I decided to make this video. Are Sunderland going to run out of fumes as the season goes on. Are Sunderland going to last the pace in the championship? Now, there are lots of reasons for why I keep making this assertion, this, this point. The first most obvious point is the fact that the championship is a very long season. 46 games. You're going Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, happy days. It's constant. It's really a long, long slog of a league. And you know what? It is ultimately a very young side. Yes, there, there are some players in there, like I've mentioned Chris Metham, who is experienced. There's Luco Nyan, who, who feels like he's been around at Sunderland for a long time. And you have Patrick Roberts, who is an absolutely brilliant winger. And to be honest, I feel there's so much more to come from him this season. He's looked so dangerous in games. But the reality is there are a lot of teams so far this season that just haven't clicked. And when these teams start to click, it will get a lot more congested and competitive at the top of the table. So far from the six games the Sunderland have played, they've had maybe two of the, I would call them heavy hitters from the league. They've had Burnley and they've had Middlesbrough, but I'm going to go through all the games so far. The season kicked off with Cardiff and now in hindsight, we can see how much of a mess Cardiff actually are. Errol Balut already got the bullet. The reality from this game is that Cardiff could have got something out of it, but you can't really read too much into the first game of the season. 
Cardiff actually, I guess, looked half decent. Their finishing was atrocious though. And Sunderland did what they needed to do. They put the game to bed and three points at the end of the day, isn't it? Then Sheffield Wednesday came to the Stadium of Light and you know what? They sat back. They let Sunderland play errors across the back, errors playing it out from midfield. It was a real turnaround for Sheffield Wednesday who absolutely battered Plymouth in their first game and also a completely different Sheffield Wednesday that turned up at Luton Town and Sunderland were very worthy 4-0 winners but you can only play what's in front of you and then came the game that I got a lot of grief about Sunderland won Burnley nil this came towards the end of the transfer window and this Burnley side you could tell from this they weren't playing James Trafford had a blinder and Burnley were absolutely awful at the back they couldn't clear a ball to save their lives they couldn't progress a ball to save their lives although fair play to Sunderland because you know what when a team is struggling to progress the ball you got to pressure you got to hurry you got to rat around and that is exactly what Sunderland did they made it very uncomfortable for Burnley they just couldn't play Burnley looked like a side that a lot of the players were agitating for moves and we saw quite a few of those players actually move on and the results have picked up since so I wouldn't say this was the Burnley that Luton Town played on the first game week because that Burnley looked absolutely fantastic. This was a Burnley side where the players weren't really holding together. It just wasn't a vintage Scott Parker masterclass, shall we say. After the sending off, Burnley, yes, they had a little bit of a go, but come on, they weren't, come on Sunderland fans, you know, you know this wasn't a Burnley firing on all cylinders. Come on. Good result though. A win is a win, doesn't matter how you win. Then Sunderland travelled to Fratton Park and we saw some of the greatest own goals. Sunderland's opener in particular was a great own goal. Vintage. Clearing a ball into your own player, absolutely sensational stuff. I, I loved it. But Sunderland looked good value for this win. But remember, this was one of the promoted sides. On to the next game. And this was Sunderland's first loss. And I'll say, fair play Plymouth. No, pretty much no one saw this coming. I did predict Plymouth to, to win with a Wayne Rooney masterclass. I didn't think the game would go quite like this. But it sort of shows the, the youth at the back. Sometimes it can, I don't want to say capitulate, but... This sort of is a microcosm of how the season could go. People losing concentration, teams pressing really high up the pitch, putting the defense under pressure, and it takes a couple of cracks before something breaks. And this is one of the reasons why I just feel Sunderland will run out of steam just looking at the collapse in this game. Although I, I will just say fair play Plymouth for persevering with it. And then at time of recording, here's the, the latest game, Sunderland won Middlesbrough nil. This was a very good result on the face of it, but when we actually look a little bit deeper, this is a Middlesbrough side who were expected to be either pushing the playoffs or competing right at the top for automatic promotion. They've been very close recently. Also, as of recording, they have the highest XG in the division and they are massively underperforming their output. And Middlesbrough had quite a few chances, but in the final third, they were awful. If their finishing had been better, it would have been a far more uncomfortable game for Sunderland. Latte Laugh, in particular, he's been pretty poor throughout this season. A lot more was expected of him, but Sunderland, they came away with it. And you know what? That Chris Rigg goal was fantastic. I love watching that goal. Fair play to him. It's amazing to see players who are so young, they just have no fear, they're happy to do those things. But that's it, realistically. There has been a lot of luck riding, playing teams at the right times in the case of Burnley. I feel it's a very different Burnley side now that the window has shut, and also playing a Middlesbrough side that just haven't found their shooting boots just yet. Another thing to consider, myself being a Luton Town fan, if you think back to the playoff semi-final second leg, it was a youthful 
full team there and you had players like Alex Pritchard and Jack Clark and the reality is Luton Town bullied Sunderland that game. Balls over the top, pushing Elijah Adebayo and Carlton Morris right up against Trihoom and Luko 9. There'll be a lot of teams in this division that don't prescribe playing this tippy-tappy football and actually want to have a go, want to be direct. Will the defence be able to hold up this season? I, th I think Sunderland probably have a better chance of holding up against aerial bombardment you have chris metham in now who's he's got experience he's tall and he's very good and dominant aerially i think you can cope with that sort of plan b but those are just my thoughts on why i don't think sunderland will last the pace but that is not to say that sunderland won't be in and around the playoff picture come the end of the season i just don't think they will be challenging for promotion and that's also not to say that I don't think Reggie Labris has built an absolutely outstanding, talented squad. It's just a bit young right now. I think next season, if the core of the squad can stay together, I think there is so much more to come from this Sunderland team. I just think this season might be a season too early. And it could be a case of playoff disappointment or possibly just missing out on the playoffs once some of the more established teams and teams that are more fancied to be right up there at the beginning of the season start to click. But I will eat my words about my pre-season prediction. I predicted Sunderland to be, I think, lower mid-table. And you know what? I'm prepared to eat those words because I think Sunderland will be comfortably upper middle table and pushing the playoffs. But Sunderland fans, get your thoughts in on the comments. Let me know how you think your season's going. Obviously, it's great, but can it be better? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments. And while you're here, why not like this video and subscribe for even more championship content? As always, whoever you support, and it might be Sunderland fans predominantly watching this, whoever you are, I hope you all have a great week.